Hi friends. So it's another Monday. Um, I am Annalie Dragon, the director of the Kinderhook Memorial Library. And this week I thought we would talk about something timely and topical. We're gonna discuss uh, National Hispanic Heritage Month, which is not a full month in our calendar sense. Uh, it is from mid-September to mid-October, so we're right in the middle of it. So I thought what better time to shine a spotlight on some of our fantastic Hispanic and Latino authors um, who have made such a difference in our culture and in our, our memory and our literary canon. Like it's it's just a wonderful time to celebrate. And there is there are so many authors that could fall into this category. So I have just picked it as not an exhaustive collection by any stretch of the imagination. I've just picked some that I am familiar with and that I have enjoyed. And I'm hoping maybe somebody new to you that you might not have picked up before that you might really enjoy. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit about each author and I'm gonna talk about probably a book or two for each one. Um, some of them I've read and some I haven't. So I will tell you which ones are which um, because I don't wanna give the false impression that I've read every book, although I'm gonna need to because I'm gonna run out of things to talk about eventually. So the first book that I wanted to discuss is a, a kind of a classic that everybody probably has heard of and I don't know if you've read, but Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who is Colombian, and passed away in 2014, I believe. Um, such an amazing author. I have read and loved his books. I saw his house when I was in Cartagena in Colombia. So I visited, uh, he is affectionately referred to as Gabo. And there have been a lot of books written about him, but also his books are just amazing. They are this magical realism, which as we all know is kind of my thing. Um, but so his most famous book is probably 100 Years of Solitude which was inspired by his hometown, which is a small city in Colombia. And I mean, obviously it's magical realism. So there are some things that are people sprouting pig's tails and things that don't happen in, in real life. Um, but his, his writing is just so poetic. And I, I believe I've said before on one of these book talks that if I were to, I've always wanted to kind of learn Spanish anyway, but particularly to be able to read his books because the translations even are so gorgeous and poetic and lyrical. I can only imagine what it's like to read them in his native tongue. I'm sure that they are even more so because usually translations are a little clunky. These translations are just beautiful and fabulous. So I loved 100 Years of Solitude, but my personal favorite of his is Love in the Time of Cholera, which is such uh, an epic romance in my opinion. And I adored it. And they give you a great sense of place and time and his deep affection for the country that he is from. And having been to Colombia, I can say it's absolutely gorgeous and lives fully up to all of the talk that he does about it in his writing. And there is a sort of magic there for sure. So if you haven't read Gabriel Garcia Marquez before, I highly recommend it. I, I think he, you know, they're not maybe necessarily the easiest reads, but they're not the most difficult either. And they're well worth the, the result, the payoff that you get from, from the time invested in them. So what better way to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month than reading a fantastic author? There's a picture of him when he was younger. So anyway, um, next author I wanted to talk about, equally famous um, and well-known, I think, Isabel Allende. She is a Chilean author. Um, many of you would probably know Daughter of Fortune or The House of the Spirits, which are her kind of most famous books, I think. I don't have either one of them sitting here with me, but I have her most recent book, which just came out this year um, in January, February. It's called A Long Petal of the Sea. So she is, you know, these, she writes kind of epics spanning generations. Um, a lot of them are very uh, family oriented. This one, uh, the, the Long Petal of the Sea, is about the Spanish Civil War. And so um, it is written by a Latina author, but then also about Spain. So I think it doubly counts for our Hispanic Heritage Month discussion. Um, but she, again, she has just a beautiful way with words. And um, I have read several of her books and really enjoyed them. I have not read this one yet. Uh, it's on my list, my, my very large and growing to be read list, which is an occupational hazard. Um, but so I highly recommend Isabella Allende if you have not checked any of hers out and there are a lot of them, but if you've read those, maybe a new one. So the next author, I, I didn't read this particular book I'm gonna show you, but I read another of his. So Juno Diaz, who is a Dominican author, um, I have a, a, a number of very close Dominican friends who recommended him and 
His books are fabulous. He won the Pulitzer Prize actually for The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow is the name of the book that I read that I couldn't put down. You might need a dictionary to kind of translate or some slang dictionary because he does a little Spanglish and he does some um, words that are particular to the Dominican lexicon. Um, but I don't think you, you don't need to speak Spanish because I don't speak Spanish. You don't need to speak Spanish to read them. Uh, he has a way of writing and he, it's a, it's a story of a young boy, but he tells so much of the story of the Dominican diaspora and the colonization of the Dominican Republic and a bunch of the history that I had no knowledge of, which I think is probably more common, unfortunately, than it should be. Um, and so it was great because it's this work of fiction that's really engaging, but it also was teaching me something, which is my favorite kind of book. So I learned a lot about the Dominican Republic by reading that book. The one that I have sitting here with me today, which is his, another one of his, is called This Is How You Lose Her. So if you haven't checked out, his books are smaller. They are a little less formally written, which I enjoy a lot. And you will definitely learn something um, while being entertained, hopefully. So Juno Diaz, um, and he's a more modern uh, current author that you will, you will see. Uh, the next person I wanted to talk about, I've mentioned in Book Talks before, it's Paulo Coelho, who is from Brazil. Um, and obviously The Alchemist, is the book I have discussed and is his most famous book. Um, but he has written a number of others. There is one that I absolutely adore called Veronica Decides to Die. And I don't want to spoiler alert, give you too much information about it because the twist in it is really important to the message. But I really found that one moving. Um, obviously, The Alchemist changed my life. I have said this on a number of occasions to a number of people, and I will continue saying it. Um, I, this is a book that I buy and give away to people all the time. So when I meet somebody new who becomes a friend of mine, if they haven't read it, I give them a copy. And I don't want it back. I want them to keep it for themselves because I just think it's a little bit of magic. So if you haven't read uh, any Paulo Coelho, there are a number of books, but I would recommend either The Alchemist or Veronica Decides to Die as my as my favorites. This one's my favorite, but Veronica Decides to Die is excellent. Okay, the next author I will fully admit I have not read, um, but he is a, a major voice in the uh, Hispanic and Latino literary canon. Uh, Jorge Luis Borges is uh, very famous for his collections of short stories. So Ficciones is the, is the main one, I think, that everybody reads, um, but he has written others. Um, and so the one, what I actually thought was interesting is as I was putting this together, I had done an unboxing a few weeks ago and we got a new book in called Borges and Me, which isn't written by him, but is about him. Uh, this author, it says, it's a poignant coming of age memoir. An apprentice writer has an encounter with literary genius Jorge Luis Borges that will profoundly alter his life and work. So I thought, what a cool thing that like I'm doing this talk about him and I, I don't have uh, the collection of short stories in front of me, but I have this book about this author that met him and was inspired by him, as I think many authors um, have been. So if you're more a short fiction, short story kind of person, he may be the author that you need to be introduced to this month. Um, and I, his, his books are in the catalog, so you can definitely request them. And uh, he's one of the founders kind of of the literary canon, I think, for uh, Latino authors. So Borges. Um, and Me is the name of that book by Jay Perini. And I will put all of the covers at the end of this talk so that if you are not catching my speed talking. I, many people tell me I speak really fast and I would argue you have no idea what it sounds like inside my head. I can barely keep up. <laughs> um, the, the last kind of big author that I know of that I wanted to discuss because I loved this book is uh, Laura Esquival. She is Mexican and she wrote Like Water for Chocolate, which was made into a movie and is a very big book from years ago. It is a novel in monthly installments with recipes, romances, and home remedies. Again, pretty heavy on the magical realism, which love. Uh, she, this book is a lot about cooking. So if you are a cook or a chef, you might really enjoy this one because it talks about sort of the magic of cooking and the idea that your emotions can be baked into or cooked into something that you are making and then have that effect on whoever is eating it. And I kind of love that because even if it's not literally true, I do think that a lot of us, I'm a baker, I bake with a great deal of affection and I feel like I hope that comes across when somebody eats the things that I've made for them. So I did love this book. Um, I have not seen the movie, but I'm sure the book is better because it always is. So like water for chocolates. And then I just wanted to quickly talk about two new books that are by uh, Hispanic authors that I thought you might enjoy, which I have not read yet, but I clearly bought them because I thought they looked fantastic. So the first one is by Eva Garcia Senas, 
and it's called The Silence of the White City. It's a murder mystery. How do you stop a killer who's always two steps ahead? Sounds like a great murder mystery and it's got a B on the front. Um, she is, she lives in Spain. And so this is uh, a, a, just a murder mystery, fast paced murder mystery, and it's brand new. And um, I believe it's newly translated as well. I don't know that all of her books have been translated, but I'm excited to read this one. So a new up and coming kind of author. And then the other book I pulled off of our new shelf, which you can borrow, um, is called Motherland. I'm sorry for the glare. Again, I'll put the, um, the covers up after. So this one is written by Leah Franke, and she is a Puerto Rican Jewish Philadelphia native. And so she's a graduate of Yale University. This book, it's got a, um, a quote on the front that says, it's lively and evocative with memorable and deeply human characters. So this is not her first book. Um, America for Beginners was, I believe, her first book. But this is a wonderfully insightful, witty, and heartfelt novel set in Mumbai, which is actually where the author lives right now. Um, her headstrong, uh, it's about an impulsive American woman, her headstrong Indian mother-in-law, and the unexpected twists and turns of that life that bring them closer together. So this one, if you're not into murder mysteries and scary stuff, this one's a much more, I think, heartfelt, family-oriented um, book about relationships and um, families. So also with a twist. And um, also you could check out her first book, her debut, which was America for Beginners. So we have, as you can tell, an embarrassment of riches when it comes to fantastic Hispanic authors um, in our collections and throughout the system. They're online, they're in the, on the shelves. So feel free to go in and check them out. And if you haven't read some of these authors, you may discover a new favorite. So I think that's one of the best things about checking out something that maybe is off the beaten path or somebody you haven't read, but you've heard a lot about. Um, usually there's a reason you've heard a lot about them. So I hope that you have enjoyed and uh, let's all do our best to celebrate all of the wonderful diversity that makes our country so fabulous um, and celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month together. I will be back next week with some more books and if you just stay tuned right now you'll get all of the covers of the books we just discussed so you can look up some new authors and make some new literary friends. Okay thanks guys I'll talk to you soon.